Thanks for the introduction, uh, Smith. Uh, so my title today is the experimental and theoretical approach for developing, development of energy storage materials. Uh, my name is uh, Kihiro Kishima. I'm an assistant professor at uh, IMPAC and MSE, and I'm also affiliated with uh, Nano Center. And also I've been uh, serving as uh, ASM chapter chair and I'm holding like a regular uh, ASM uh, seminars. So if anyone is interested in presenting your work, uh, please let me know. Uh, we can arrange the uh, speaker, invite the speaker for this. Okay, and I have my uh, web page and email address and phone number listed here. So please contact me if you have any further questions after this presentation. Okay, uh, so this is actually my uh, third time presenting my work at CC seminar. So I don't think I need to explain too much about my background. Uh, so I got my PhD in Kyoto University back in 2007, and I did postdoc at MIT and UPenn and research scientist at MIT before join, uh, joining UC Health at 2017. Okay, um, in my research career, I started out as a, a theorist, uh, studying atomics, uh, start, uh, performing atomistic simulations for uh, studying mechanical properties of materials, gas transition, solid oxide fuel cells, and a very, a very fundamental research. Then from 2010, I started working on uh, transmission electron microscopy, especially the in-situ uh, TEM, uh, try to understand what is happening inside the battery in the nanoscale or even in the atomic scale. So, so since then, I've been working in the two ends, like, uh, two branches of my research, uh, simulations and experiment to understand the fundamentals of uh, energy storage materials. Okay, so here is uh, my uh, research areas. And in terms of teaching, I have been teaching electron microscope courses and uh, different uh, material science uh, courses. Okay, <clears throat> uh, in my research, my main topic is on the energy storage materials. And there are lots of issues in the current lithium battery technology. One of them is the safety issues. Uh, if there is some flaws or some uh, damage in the batteries, uh, they can easily catch fire because in, inside the battery, uh, the, uh, the materials are made of like a transition metal oxide and also graphite on the anode. So this oxide, uh, if there is a heat, they can release the oxygen. And also the electrolyte is made of a very flammable uh, organic solvent. Uh, so uh, you have a heat, oxygen, and uh, fuel. So that can lead to a really high uh, explosion or uh, you know combustion. And also you want to extend the uh, uh, battery capacity, so you want to use high energy density materials. And one of the most uh, high, uh, one of the highest uh, capacity material is a lithium metal. And if you could, you if you could use lithium metal as an anode, uh, it's uh, it's an ultimate uh, battery. It's, uh, there is really uh, huge issues because this lithium tend to form a very sharp dendrite, uh, short, uh, creating a short circuit of the batteries. And another huge issue in this uh, battery industry is the supply issues. Uh, in this uh, uh, cathode, I mean this uh, lithium battery cathode, we use uh, cobalt and nickel for the high capacity uh, electrode. And if you look at the supply and the demand balance, um, it seems like if you if the EV is continued to increase at the current rate, um, probably at around 2024, uh, sorry, at 2024 or late 2023, uh, many uh, consulting firms predict uh, the supply will far exceed, uh, sorry, the, the uh, demand will far exceed the supply and we are gonna have issues for, for the further development of uh, uh, EVs and uh, portable electronics. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. And this is for the cobalt and there is also issue with the nickel as well. But uh, the nickel the deficiency will just uh, extend a little bit later than cobalt, but eventually uh, there will be a time when there is not much in uh, not much supply to create this uh, uh, batteries to supply all the electric vehicles. Okay, so we need to do something for this. And <coughs> excuse me. Uh, for the batteries, uh, they have like a different applications. And depending on the uh, usage, like smartphone, all the way up to EVs, uh, there are different requirements, like cost, safety, uh, how much energy you need to have. 
and also have one order cycle lifetime from this material. Because for if you have EP, you want to at least uh, guarantee a 10 year of uh, battery operations, right? And uh, lithium battery is not actually enough uh, for this, uh, to, for meeting all these uh, requirements, especially for the highly demanding applications. Uh, and there are lots of uh, advanced lithium ion batteries have been developed with high voltage and high energy density uh, electrode. And uh, to solve uh, this uh, previously shown uh, supply issues, we can uh, go into the, uh, beyond uh, uh, this lithium ion battery chemistry. Uh, for example, we can look at lithium sulfur battery with uh, a low cost uh, materials and also earth abandoned materials. But uh, these things, they have uh, lots of issues that we need to overcome. And uh, in my research group, uh, we are trying to use uh, a uh, theoretical and experimental study to understand the issues, to identify the issues, and try to find solution uh, to those uh, issues and develop new uh, battery design and uh, battery uh, systems. Okay, <clears throat> uh, one of the uh, uh, battery technology that has been attracting attention is all solid state batteries. So there are many startup companies working on this uh, technology because they don't rely on the flammable liquid. Uh, in, but there are some issues uh, in this associated with this uh, reaction mechanism because we have, uh, instead of a uh, liquid, uh, we have a solid electrolyte. So interface uh, between the electrode and solid electrolyte is going to be always an issue, especially when there is a reaction taking place at the interface, it might cause a fracture of the solid electrolyte uh, that can lead to a permanent uh, 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 premature failure of the batteries. So we, in my group, we try to develop uh, the way to analyze this uh, complex reaction between electrochemistry and mechanics. So what we did here is uh, uh, place the uh, AFM uh, atomic force microscope cantilever inside a, a transmission electron microscope and contact the lithium metal or some other uh, materials and apply bias and see how much force it is you can see uh, you can observe uh, in this uh, reaction process. So here's an example. Uh, we have like a bias potential applied to this uh, electrolyte and electrode. And we can see the lithium start to grow at the, uh, this interface, uh, pushing this cantilever away from the uh, electrolyte. And because we know the uh, spin constant of the cantilever, uh, we can see what will be the, um, the actual force being applied to this electrode. And we can calculate uh, the force as well as the stress and the change in the uh, microstructure of this uh, lithium metal and see what how this uh, uh, lithium will grow and how they are affected by the mechanical strength. And we can also perform a simulation to see uh, how why uh, this uh, stress will change uh, this uh, growth reaction and so on. So this is just a preliminary study to test in the concept. Uh, we can apply this to the actual uh, solid electron material. And we can place this cantilever in a, a selected location of the, the, de uh, of the uh, electrolyte, uh, especially at the defect site. So that's why the, uh, the fracture is expected to take place. Uh, we can apply bias and start to see how the crack will grow during this deposition process. Uh, since we can measure the, the force, uh, we can also look at uh, how much force uh, that was actually being uh, developed during this uh, uh, lithium deposition process, uh, how does the crack will grow uh, according to this uh, applied, I mean, uh, emerging force during this electrochemical reactions. Okay. Uh, we can also perform uh, computational simulations to see uh, how, so during this deposition process, lithium can migrate in the electro, uh, uh, electrolyte and also being deposited to the electrolyte. So there may be some change in, in this uh, lithium concentration during this process. Uh, we have confirmed uh, by computation uh, simulation that if there is slight change in the electric uh, lithium concentration, uh, there is a reduction in the mechanical property uh, significantly compared to the perfectly uh, stoichiometric uh, uh, electrolyte. And this is particularly true uh, because there is uh, some in, uh, some disorder that being introduced by extra lithium or sorry, extra lithium or lithium deficient. So that can trigger 
a fracture uh, in this mechanical process, uh, mechanical stressing that leads to the weakening of this uh, material. And we can also look into more detail in the electrochemical bonding, and we can compare different, uh, we are comparing different solid electrolytes, uh, how stable they are against the mechanical uh, property, and also the change in the uh, lithium concentrations. Okay, uh, we might think, uh, does this really happen in this uh, solid electrolyte line of uh, operations? And we have confirmed uh, using in situ transmission electron microscopy, how the solid electrolyte will change their shapes uh, during this, uh, when they are in contact with uh, lithium. Uh, here, if, as long as, as soon as you got contact with lithium and we apply the bias, there is a flow of lithium that causes some uh, mechanical deformation uh, in this uh, uh, solid electrolyte and the lithium interfaces. And moreover, uh, if you apply bias potential uh, in this solid electrolyte, you can see some change in the contrast. As you apply bias to drive lithium away from this interface, you can see uh, the change in the contrast causing the defic lithium deficient layer. And once you reverse the potential, the lithium will come back to the original place. So there is a chance that during this charge and discharge process, uh, there will be a change in the lithium concentration leading to the uh, weakening of this material. So we need to uh, solve uh, these kind of issues uh, uh, when you design uh, all solid state batteries. So that's for the very fundamental studies. And I've been also working on to develop new uh, uh, electrode materials. <clears throat> so this is for the lithium sulfur batteries. Uh, we can mix uh, different uh, materials and also uh, lithium polysulfide species, which is Li2S8 in this case. And uh, we can look at, uh, we can improve the much performance uh, uh, by mixing this uh, uh, material into the uh, uh, carbon materials. And you can also look at the reaction process uh, in this uh, material in, inside the uh, electron microscope and see how fast uh, this reaction may, can take place in this particular materials. And another important uh, development we have performed is to add uh, liquid metal into this uh, uh, lithium sulfur battery electrode. So uh, in my previous study, I used a lithium uh, liquid metal to improve the uh, uh, battery performance. Uh, why not use it to a different system? Uh, we found by adding a liquid metal that can help a system with uh, electro electrical conductivity and also some effect of trapping uh, intermediate species uh, in the battery, uh, lithium sulfur battery reaction that can cause the degradation in the materials. So you can use uh, both theoretical analysis to confirm the effect of liquid metal and do the electrochemical testing to see uh, the improvement in the battery performance as well. And finally, I want to uh, mention that uh, uh, we want to develop the uh, nickel and cobalt free cathode. And to do this, uh, you want to first understand what is the role of nickel and cobalt in the battery uh, cathode. And we want to find an uh, alternative element uh, to replace nickel and cobalt, yet uh, uh, maintaining the same, same level of performance as uh, uh, nickel and cobalt uh, cathode. Okay, so, <clears throat> So I'm doing this uh, uh, first principle simulations to predict the material performance, battery performance based on uh, different additives. And uh, we have identified uh, some good candidate. Uh, this is, I cannot, uh, this is uh, with a uh, uh, sponsor, so I cannot disclose uh, its actual materials. But uh, we are in the current, uh, at the current stage, we are trying to synthesize uh, the, uh, the battery that was predicted. Uh, we're trying to see if we can replace the current uh, cathode and propose a new uh, electrode materials. Uh, finally, I just want to show my collaborators and the students. Uh, so there was, uh, and I thank all the uh, sponsors for this uh, research. And I'm open for any questions.